Something we tend to overlook is how we store sensitive files. We discussed how to delete and dispose files in the previous lesson, but how do you protect them when you're not trying to delete them? Should you store them locally, over the cloud, what do you do? The easiest place to start is to encrypt your drive with full disk encryption, but that's going to be its own topic in section 5. For this lesson, we're going to look at individual files and folders you want to safely protect. There are countless tools out there that encrypt files, preventing anyone without the password from viewing them. The three pieces of software we will use for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, these softwares work on those operating systems, is 7-Zip, Veracrypt, and GNU Privacy Guard. Let's cover these more in depth. Go Incognito and all of our other projects that we do are made available completely free to you. One of the ways we're able to do this for a living and offer it for free is through people who are supporting our work. So thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon and thank you to our privacy supporters on YouTube. If you want to help enable us spread privacy to the masses, make sure to check out our Patreon and join as well as becoming a privacy supporter on YouTube. YouTube. Not only are you helping our cause, but you can gain access to behind the scenes, like how this lesson was created, badges in the YouTube comments, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and other cool perks. We really do appreciate anything you can do to help us out, and thank you for your support. The first software, which isn't technically an encryption software, is 7-Zip. 7-Zip is a FOSS archiving tool, allowing you to compress and uncompress files in Zip, 7-Zip, RAR, and other archiving extensions. The reason I included 7-Zip is because many people already use it, and it allows you to password protect archives, which is a form of encryption. As an example, let's encrypt these files. We're going to convert them to a zip archive, which will compress them and save space on your computer, but we can also encrypt the archive with a password to properly secure it. Now no one can access the files without a password. That's 7-Zip. It's not the most secure way of doing things, but it's an option. The next software is Veracrypt, and it's my go-to piece of software. The way it works is you create a volume that you can load your files into, kind of like a virtual flash drive. However, the volume is encrypted, so you need a password to gain access, protecting every single file stored within the volume. Veracrypt is open source, free, and even offers partition and full disk encryption for Windows, which, like I said, will be discussed later in section 5. Veracrypt is considered one of the most versatile and robust options, so I would highly recommend you at least try it out. I have a guide on how to use it on my YouTube channel. The last piece of software is GNU Privacy Guard, which works slightly different from the others. GNU Privacy Guard is FOSS and implements PGP encryption, aka pretty good privacy. Something that can be either an advantage or disadvantage is GNU Privacy Guard relies on third parties to build a front-end graphical user interface for you to use, meaning there's really no official client offered. You pick the one you enjoy the most. This is different from Veracrypt, which for the most part uses the same unified software for all major operating systems. So those are the three different pieces of software you can use today to encrypt your files. There are plenty of others, but these are three good options to get you started today. It's important to encrypt content, so if anybody gains access to your computer, flash drives, or external hard drives, they won't be able to view your files. Keep in mind that if your whole disk is not encrypted, anyone can view your files on your computer even if it's password protected. I demonstrated this in a video on my channel. Awesome, Henry, but what about cloud storage? Is the cloud safe? What do we do about it? Let's break down the largest four services. iCloud, Google Drive, Dropbox, and Microsoft OneDrive. All four of them encrypt your traffic while it's being transmitted. That's a great start. There's a problem though. They encrypt data while it's being transferred, but what about data at rest stored on their servers? Dropbox encrypts your data with 256-bit AES encryption, which is great, but they also hold the keys for the encryption, which could lead to unauthorized access by them or law enforcement requests. iCloud and Google Drive have the same law enforcement problem, but they implement 128-bit encryption, which is weaker. OneDrive, as of writing the script, doesn't even use encryption with data at rest. In general, cloud services are difficult to trust, we know the NSA has access to user data with some companies through the PRISM project. If you do go with one of these services, try to encrypt your files using one of the services we discussed earlier and only send encrypted files through the cloud services. That way, even if your data is accessed, it's encrypted. Now, hold up, not every cloud service is created equal. Mega seems to be more decent, and Proton Drive is an upcoming service from the creators of ProtonMail, which may be promising. 
The last and best cloud storage option is Nextcloud, which is a FOSS self-hosted cloud storage service, meaning you host it yourself and you own all of your data. The setup can be tricky for beginners, but this is by far the best way to go if you're able to go this route. There are some people who rent out essentially their own servers that you could use as well. And that wraps up the basics on proper storage and encryption. I hope this was useful to you and I will see you all in the next lesson teaching safe communication, including messaging, calls, and emails, the reason we use the internet. Thank you for watching and see you then.